Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest board from the guys at KISS. Now, this is something called the KISS Compact Control CC All-in-One Flight Controller. And what it actually is, is a KISS flight controller with four ESCs all built in to one dinky little board. Now, this is really designed for smaller sized quadcopters. And we were lucky enough to get our hands on the version one as part of the beta tester. So we built this little rig here to play around. Now, one of the things that I sometimes struggle with with smaller quadcopters is the fact that they're a little bit underpowered. And I've been wanting to build and fly a little indoor quadcopter with brush motors for a while. And by using this flight controller, all you have to do is connect your battery, connect your receiver and the wires to your motors and you're good to go. Now, we built ours on this little grasshopper frame. We did a review of this grasshopper frame oh, ages ago, and I was waiting for the KISS guys to bring out this board. They've been working on it for a very long time, so I'm pleased that we've finally got the real version out here to play with. The motors that we're running in here are 1306, 3100 kV motors, and they're running four inch props with a 4.5 inch pitch. We're also using one of these little all-in-one FPV camera transmitter doobies at the front, and we're also using a little separate UBEC battery illuminated circuit to run this little guy at five volts. Because the one thing this thing doesn't have is lots of amperage available on the five volt line, but we'll talk about that when we get into the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the top off this. We'll come back and have a look at what we've actually got to do. We'll take out this original V1 board, which was part of the beta test, and we'll install the actual version, the KISS Compact Control CC All-in-One. So in this video, we'll make all the connections off, we'll plug it into the computer, because as usual with KISS, it comes pre-flashed with the latest and greatest version of the software. So setup is a piece of cake, and uh, in about... 15 minutes hopefully in the video we'll have this little guy flying so let me just stop the video here i'll take these screws off the top and i'll show you how we've got it wired up before i start taking all of the soldering joints off with the top of the model it's very easy to see how this thing is connected and the new version of the board is going to go in in a very very similar way indeed so the flight controller itself we have the connection up to the battery that goes into the power connector. Then I have this little battery illuminator circuit here, which is providing the five volts. Basically, it's just connecting to the battery that's coming in that's supplying the camera. And the only other connections then are from an XSR, which we're using here, plugged into both the telemetry, positive ground, and the signal wires as well. And once you've made those connections off, along with the ESC, that's all the connections that you have to do. So if we just zoom in on this board just a little bit more. So on here, the connections are very similar. We have the battery connections here for the plus and minus. So again, we're going to do exactly the same thing and just connect the battery directly onto the flight controller. You don't need to have any cleverness from the ESCs or anything. All of the conversion to the five volts needed to run everything is happening here on the board itself. We have the connections here for the actual receiver and all of these connections are actually covered in the manual. If you go onto the KISS website itself and you do a bit of searching, the manual is on there and this is the one image that shows how everything goes together. I do like the way KISS work to try and make it as easy as possible for you to get everything connected up. So if we jump back to the desk, this is where we're going to connect our receiver to. We have a couple of pins for uh, pinouts. We also have a connection for a buzzer. I am going to add a buzzer to this little model uh, because now we're in the final version and hopefully we're into brighter sunny days. I do want to try and fly this model outside. And if it comes down in long grass with it being particularly small and dinky, I'm going to lose it. So we're going to put a buzzer on there as well. And then the underneath, there aren't that many other ports really. There's this additional port here, and uh, if we just jump back to the diagram, you can see in the bottom left hand corner, there's all kinds of things you can do with that, connecting it to uh, LEDs and other pieces as well. So now we've looked at how this is going to be put together, let me just pull all of this apart. We'll come back and we'll start making off the connections we need for this board. Job one was to remove all the connections from the old flight controller. So here we've moved the receiver, we've moved the UBEC, and we just have to take off the connections to the ESCs that are underneath. 
the board itself, the version 1 here that we were beta testing is very, very similar to the latest version, but the latest version has some cute little touches which we'll come on to in a second. So now we've got all those pieces out of the way, next thing to do then is to start putting everything onto the new flight controller. First thing I did was install the power supply. We're using a little JST battery connector here and that is going to run underneath the board itself because I have enough room and also I wanted to make sure that there was lots of room on the top so that I didn't run out of space in this tiny little frame. Then I installed it into the frame itself, just temporarily holding it in place with two of the posts, just to confirm that underneath nothing was touching the carbon fibre, and then once I was happy that that was all good, we can start to actually connect up the different cables. First thing I did was solder on that little battery illuminate circuit. We're actually using that little Maytech thing. These little micro BECs can supply the 12 or 5 volts and we use them in all kinds of things, but because they are so dinky, they're perfect for this. I've just soldered that onto the plus and minus pads that are there to connect the battery on top of the board, which is handy. It means that I don't have to mess around anymore with that. Next job then is to connect the wires for the receiver. We have the telemetry wire on the right hand side, then ground, plus five volts, and then the signal cable as well. Just to the right of that, that's actually the boot button that you can press if you need to flash it. Although I've checked with the board that's come here and the board as we'll see in a second, is actually running the very latest and greatest version. Next job then is to start connecting the wires from the motors to the ESC connections. Now what I've done here is just put a little blob of solder in position on the edge, just making sure that I'm not bridging anything, and then very briefly touching the wires from the motors onto position and soldering them up and going around and doing each one in turn being very careful that we're not bridging anything at all making sure that we're not catching anything under the board once we've got all that done that's all the soldering we need to do we have our connection for power underneath we have our connection for the fpv equipment on the top via that little ubeck we have our receiver all connected and set up we have all of the wires to the motors configured as well. The only thing I haven't done yet is install the buzzer, but I'm going to 3D print and design a little enclosure for the buzzer so we can have that stuck out of the back. So let's go back to the bench now. We've done the build and I'll talk a little bit about the next pieces before we finally plug it into the computer and do the software configuration. So now all of the soldering is done, then the last thing I would recommend is get yourself your little voltmeter or your multimeter, set it on to resistance and just check that there isn't any shorts between any of the connections of the ESC. Uh, you might find that when you make the connection initially it looks like a short, but then very quickly the resistance comes up as so all the MOSFETs kind of do their thing. And also make sure there isn't a short between the positive and negative leads on your power supply. And that way, just double checking that you haven't bridged anything accidentally with some of your soldering. Now, we have our little BEC connected here at the top. That is there to provide the 5 volts power. This is one of those Maytech micro BECs. We've used them on a couple of things. The reason that we're using that is because the board itself, and if you actually look in the manual itself, it talks about this. The onboard 5 volt supply is only capable of supplying about an amp. Now, a receiver, which uh, is what we're using here, at the moment we're going to reuse this XSR that I was using on the previous version. If I was making this today brand new and fresh, I'd actually probably use one of these things. This is the new XM Plus, uh, a full range receiver from FR Sky and you can see how much smaller it is. This would have probably been a better solution if I'd been making this now, but I'm just gonna put this little guy together. So we have all the connections here at the side for our connection to that. So we have our smart port, power, ground, and the signal from this little guy as well, which was, should give us SBUS, which would be great. And then the only other things that we need to worry about are the reversing pads. Now on the version one of this thing there weren't any reversing pads at all and just like with the normal KISS ESCs they have added the ability to reverse the ESC so there's one pad there hopefully the camera's picking this up and keeping up there's one pad there one pad there and one pad there so for each of the connections on the corners 
If you want to reverse the direction of motor when we come to test it, I'm just going to put a little blob of solder and bridge those two connections. So it actually doesn't matter which way around, you connect the motors, which is going to be great. Now, the next thing we need to do then is we're going to need to plug in our receiver. There we go, we've got our receiver connected now. So I'm going to plug this into the computer, um, but before we need to do that, we need to install a couple of things. We need to install the KISS graphical user interface. Now, historically, you would just use the application as part of the Google Chrome extension, similar to what you use for Betaflight, CleanFly, iNav, even things like the BL Heli Suite has their own version in here now. However, this is quite an old version and not the one that you want to configure this board. What you need to do is go onto the website, find the latest version of the configurator. There's a link here, the KISS stuff, and you download and install that. There's versions here for Windows and all kinds of different things as well. We're going to install the Windows 64 bit and then once once that's installed, we can come back and we can plug this little guy in and start the configuration. So let me get ready to set everything up and we'll come back and we'll do that piece. So let's plug this little guy into the computer. Now again, just double double check that you haven't got any shorts or that you haven't bridged any connections because we're going to apply power via a battery at some point because we're going to test the motors. Now everything that we're about to go through here is pretty standard stuff for whatever model you're setting up. And if you've never seen a model set up before, then we do have our quadcopter building for beginners series that take you through every single step. But let me briefly cover what we're about to do in the graphical user interface that we've downloaded and installed from KISS, and here's the list. First of all, we're going to set up the radio. Now the radio itself, we have ours set up here, and we have a pretty standard setup these days for most things. And the way I've got this set... <laughs> talking a lot because we've done a lot of extra things but what we've got are the basic four flight controls and we have three switches set up one is going to do the flight modes one is going to arm the board and one is going to sound the beeper in the corner if we lose this in grass so with that all set up we are ready to go into the GUI and change the settings so while we're in the settings first of all we're going to have to tell it what kind of connection it's got. We're going to tell it it's an XSR, it's an S-Bus connection. We're going to have to make sure that the direction of travel for all the sticks are all okay and that the flight controls are all moving. Then we're going to confirm the failsafe settings if there are any, configure the flight nodes as needed. Then we're going to do things like calibrate the sensors, make sure that the board learns what level feels like. Calibrate the motors and ESCs, make sure that they are working in the right direction. These ESCs on here amazingly support D-Shot 600, so we shouldn't have to bugger about with things like calibration, but we'll give it a shot. Then we configure any extra modes that we need. We're not going to have to do anything on here, so we should be able to go right to the end. We're going to install the props and uh, then take it out for a test hover. Now, you'll notice that we are not installing the props here. We are going to apply power, and if anything untowards happens, I don't want this thing flying around the room that we're in, making a mess of everything. The only other thing I have done here, you probably spotted, I have installed that little piezoelectric buzzer at the back so that we can set up buzzer mode. So here on the computer, we've started the application. KISS Flight Control GUI version 1.14 and at the moment we're just waiting to talk to something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the radio. I'm going to have that slightly out of the screen because... Oops, here we go. So uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug it in and we'll go and check that everything's all working and I'll show you the settings. So there we are, the board is ready. Now when the board powers up, you have a green light on the top. Uh, I've already bound the receiver to the radio, so the green light as well on that. And there's a beautiful little pretty blue light, I hope you can kind of see that on the camera, for each of the ESCs underneath. So it should be quite nice to watch this flying around at dusk. So we're going to connect on the computer. First of all, we're going to select the type of receiver we want because we're going through that generic setup list. Uh, there's loads of different ones that we can choose from here, but we obviously have an FR Sky S bus connection. This is an X4R. So we'd normally then save settings. If we then jump into advanced data output, 
then if we move the throttle and let's just make sure that all the connections are moving properly telemetry lost now the radio is going to give those uh, warnings occasionally about telemetry and that's just because the antennas are so close together. So if I move the throttle, it's a rise on the screen. There it is. goes from 10007 up to 1985, which is a nice range. If we take the your control to the left and to the right, it's going to 1985 down to about 1005, which is good. And the middle position is settling at 1500. You also want to make sure that each of the controls moves in this direction and that it doesn't go below 1000 or above 2000 and use your sub trims to get it to settle as close to 1500 as you possibly can. Now, next thing to do then is we're going to check the individual modes. So, rate mode active. Auxiliary 1 is the one we're going to use for modes. Auxiliary 2 is what we're going to use for arming and auxiliary 3 is the one we're going to use for buzzer. So now we know that we can set up the mode going back into the configuration tab we're saying that auxiliary 2 medium and high is going to arm the board auxiliary 1 at high is going to be level or self level mode so we can turn that on and off auxiliary 3 I think it was low just check that that's the case. So if we just go into data output again and put the seat. Yeah, auxiliary three going high. We want lost. that turning. Oh, shut up, radio. We, we want Telemetry that recovered. auxiliary three as it goes high to be the one that turns that on. So auxiliary three high save settings. Okay, so there's all those pieces set up. While we're in here, we also need to make sure that we've calibrated the accelerometer, make sure the machine itself is nice and level, and click Calibrate Accelerometer. You should also see as you move this thing around. In the graphical user interface with KISS, we don't have the luxury of actually getting um, any kind of virtual image of the thing itself, so hopefully it's the right way around. In the advanced tab, uh, you can actually change the flight controller orientation. This is the default. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that that's going to work OK. So the next thing to do then is to make sure that the motors are OK. Now, in configuration, we can say what kind of ESC mode we want. We have all the D shots, all the one shots, and PWM as well. Uh, we can choose anything one shot 125 or D shot 600. Because these little guys are D shot 600 compatible, let's try that. That should make things an awful lot easier if it all works. Going into data output, then we can test the motors. Now, I'm going to click on test, it'll warn me, and I'll say, I know what I'm doing. Whether I do or not is up for debate, but we're going to click that anyway. And now we can actually test the motors themselves. And what I'm going to do is now apply power, because as we raise the throttle, it'll actually activate the individual ESCs and we'll start to see the motors running. So let me just um, move this to the side. So I'm going to, let's try motor one, raise the throttle. And I'm not sure if you can see that on the thing, but that is working and it's turned the right way as well. Super. Let's try motor two, which should be this one. There it is moving perfectly. And by sheer luck, we're going the right way as well. Two for two. Motor three should be at the back. There he is. Amazingly going the right way as well. And then finally motor four, which should be him. Oh, that's working great. Fantastic. I definitely didn't short anything then. And amazingly, we actually have them got, got them all going the right way. Brilliant. Okay, so now we have got to this stage, we're pretty much ready to go and fly. So I'm going to make sure that everything is saved in here. The configuration looks good. So let me very quickly show you the individual tabs. That's how I've got the basic settings. I haven't changed any PIDs. Let's go and fly this little guy, see how it is. Advanced is set like this. Data output is set like this. Rate, we're not going to change anything in here right now, or TPA. We're not going to go into ESC flasher because I don't think there's an update for this yet. So, back to the bench. Let me just unplug the ESC. Let's disconnect from the bits and pieces. 
unplug the battery, unplug the USB cable. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the top on, put the props on, make sure they're all balanced, and then let's take it out and try a test hover. Just a quick point to note, go back into the GUI if you haven't already and untick the use custom flight controller orientation. The default is that was on in hours here and it was actually incorrect. So let's get some flying done and I'll show you what this little guy is like. This is genuinely the first flight on this thing so I am taking it pretty gentle. I literally just made sure that uh, it wasn't going to flip over because we unticked that radio button and we're now out of the field. Big thanks to Mrs. Painless 60 who is stood by my side Actually shooting this video. She's getting very good at keeping these little models in frame and this is a very little model and it gets very small in the air very very quickly indeed. I'd recommend that if you're not going to fly it in a confined area like a sports hall or something else and fly it out in a big field like we're doing here today that you are flying it FPV because as soon as it starts to get away from you you start to wonder about orientation. Luckily I've got those green props on the front so they're kind of helping me out when I'm getting a little bit stuck. I'm flying this model on a 2S 500 milliamp hour pack. The entire test flight here is about three minutes and that pulled about 33% of the battery out. So if I was just pootling around like we are in this test flight, I could probably push it to about eight minutes of flight time. If I was flying it a little bit more like a hooligan, I could probably get about four or five. Now we can go to 3S or even 4S on this kind of setup. On a 2S battery, each of the proper motor combos that we're using here, and again, the motors are 1306, 3100 kV motors, spinning 4 by 45 inch props, each of those will produce about 150 grams worth of thrust. If we put a 3S pack on here, they will jump up to a whopping nearly 300 grams of thrust, so it will become a much more aggressive beastie. The entire all-up weight of this little guy is about 146 grams, including the 2S pack. So we have plenty of power. It's hovering just about half throttle. And in a second, I'll do a punch out and you can see how quickly it climbs. But for general flying, 2S on this kind of setup is more than enough. But I know some of the other pilots that have been playing with these boards have tried it with 3S and it's a little beastie. So let me just show you how quickly it does punch out. Let me bring it in front of the camera. And you'll hear me warn Mrs. Painless 360 that we're about to try a punch out. And here we go. And you can see that's a very respectable kind of climb rate, even on a 2S pack. I think if I was going to fly this, we could probably get away with an 800, a 750 or 800 milliamp hour 2S battery would give me a little bit more flight time. Camera's not bad. It's the kind of exactly what you'd expect from these kind of all-in-one units. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what these things fly like. As with all of these KISS things, it was super stable right from the off. So in summary, this video has been slightly longer than I expected, but we have gone right from the very beginning of the video. We've actually taken an old version of the board apart and put the new version of the board in. We've done the wiring, all of the setup, and got it flying inside 25 minutes. A big thank you to KISS for supplying the board and getting us involved in the beta testing. We're big fans of the stuff that those guys do, and hopefully if you're interested in creating a very simple build, for one of these smaller brushed quads to play about with, you now know what you need to do to get one of these things working well. This is one of those little quads that might go in the bag when I go away on business, because it's something that I can fly and mess around with in relatively small environments and still get my FPV kick without having to try and get any performance out of a little brushed FPV ship. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, 
all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.